Hello there, my friends. Welcome to the midweek meditation for the week of April 7th, 2021. Welcome to the worship channel of the First Presbyterian Church of Cole Valley and the Beulah Presbyterian Church of Orion. As you know, we continue our journey with Joseph, uh, one of the patriarchs of our faith. Let us come before the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you for your heart and your spirit inside us that we might know and join together because you shine a light on our path. In the name of our Savior, we pray. Amen. Today we share from the 40th chapter of the book of Genesis. Hear the blessing of God's word before us. Sometime later, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt offended their master. The king of Egypt, Pharaoh, was angry with his two officials, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker, and put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard in the same prison where Joseph was confined. The captain of the guard assigned them to Joseph, and he attended them. After they had been in custody for some time, each of the two men, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were being held in prison, had a dream the same night, and each dream had a meaning of its own. When Joseph came to them the next morning, he saw that they were dejected. So he asked Pharaoh's officials who were in custody with him in the master's house, why are your faces sad today? We both had dreams, they answered, but there is no one to interpret them. Then Joseph said to them, do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me your dreams. So the chief cupbearer told Joseph his dream. He said to him, in my dream, I saw a vine in front of me, and on the vine there were three branches. As soon as it budded, it blossomed, and it clustered, and its clusters ripened into grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup and put the cup into his hand. This is what it means, Joseph said to them. The three branches are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your position, and you will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand, just as you used to do when you were his cupbearer. But when all goes well with you, remember me and show me kindness. Mention me to Pharaoh and get me out of this prison, for I was forcibly carried off from the land of the Hebrews, and even here... I have done nothing to deserve being put in prison. When the chief baker saw that Joseph had given a favorable interpretation, he said to Joseph, I too had a dream. On my head were three baskets of bread. In the top basket were all kinds of baked goods for the Pharaoh. But the birds were eating them out of the basket on my head. This is what it means, Joseph said. The three baskets are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift off your head and hang you on a tree, and the birds will eat away at your flesh. Now the third day was Pharaoh's birthday, and he gave a feast for all of his officials. He lifted up the heads of the chief cupbearer and the chief baker, in the presence of his officials. He restored the chief cupbearer to his position, so that once again he put the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker, just as Joseph had said to them in his interpretation. The chief cupbearer, however, did not remember Joseph. He forgot him. Here ends this blessed reading coming today from the book of Genesis. Let's pause and give thanks. Dear Heavenly Father, be before us as we seek your wisdom. 
We give you thanks for the word of God and the light that the Spirit shines on our path. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now you may remember from our last meditation in chapter 39, Joseph was imprisoned, basically for doing what was right. The wife of Potiphar, you may remember, tried to trap Joseph into a compromising position, situation. And when Joseph tried to run away, his cloak got pulled off and was left behind him. And the wife of Potter screamed to attract attention and then falsely accused Joseph of sexual wrongdoing with the master's wife. Well, now, of course, Potiphar, the master, was furious that this slave that he had entrusted everything to now had betrayed that trust. So Potiphar had him thrown into prison. Now, I am sure that upon being thrown into prison, on top of everything else that had happened to him, Joseph did some reflecting on his situation. He certainly would have been tempted to ask the question of God why he was being treated so unfairly. After all, he had done everything that had been asked of him, even in the face of terrible adversity. He was thrown into a pit by his brothers. He was sold into slavery and shipped away to a foreign land, a pagan land, where the customs and the culture were completely different than he was used to, and he was separated from his family. But Joseph, rather than falling prey to the temptation of being angry with his brothers and being angry or bitter with his captors, or even being angry and bitter toward God, rather than that, he chose to say to himself, if God has seen fit to put me into all of these adverse situations in the course of my life, then God must have a purpose for me in each one of these new contexts that he places me into. That was the way he chose to handle his being enslaved in the house of Potiphar. And it served him well, except for when he encountered Mrs. Potiphar. So instead of being bitter and angry that he had been thrown into prison unjustly, he decided again to look for the purpose that God had in store for him even in this new context for his life, an Egyptian prison. And soon, he impressed the jailer that was over him so much that the jailer entrusted many of the duties of a jailer over to Joseph. Being in prison was certainly not an ideal situation for Joseph, but in seeking God's direction, in seeking God's purpose, he found out that there was a purpose. And indeed, that purpose was authored by God, even in the situation of him being in prison. God had challenged Joseph to patiently serve him and to trust him, no matter what path that that trust would lead him down. And so, amazingly enough, Joseph found fulfillment in living life that way, looking for good, looking for purpose, even in a very difficult situation, even in prison. One day, after he had been in prison for a while, and after he had taken a surprising leadership role within the walls of the prison, Two new prisoners were sent to the same prison where Joseph was incarcerated, a baker and a cupbearer. 
They both had done something to offend Pharaoh, to make Pharaoh unhappy. And the captain of the guard of the prison placed the cupbearer and the baker in the care of Joseph. One day, Joseph came in to where the cupbearer and the baker were. They had been there for a while, and he noticed they were dejected. They were both very unhappy. So Joseph asked them, why are you dejected? Why are you so unhappy today? They explained to Joseph that they had both had interesting dreams. And because they were in prison, there was nobody around to interpret the dreams for them. So Joseph said to them, don't all interpretations come from God? Just tell me your dreams. So the chief cupbearer went first. He told Joseph of his dream. The cupbearer told Joseph that in his dream, he saw a vine. And on the vine, there were three branches that stemmed off. And as soon as it budded, it blossomed, and its clusters ripened into grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, said the cupbearer. And I took the grapes and squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup and then put that cup into the hand of Pharaoh. So then Joseph said to the cupbearer, this is what your dream means. The three branches stand for three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to the position that you had before you were imprisoned. And you will put Pharaoh's cup into his hand, just the same way that you used to do. And then Joseph said to the cupbearer, just remember, when all goes well with you, when you're restored to the position in Pharaoh's house, don't forget about me and how I interpreted this dream for you. Remember, he said, put in a good word for Joseph when you find good fortune with the Pharaoh. Then the baker, having seen that Joseph found a favorable interpretation for the cupbearer, told Joseph about his dream. He said, on my head there were three loaves of bread, three baskets full of bread. And the top basket, there were all kinds of good baked goods for the pharaoh. But the birds were eating all of the baked goods out of the basket. Then... Joseph told the baker that the three baskets were three days. And within three days, Pharaoh would lift off the baker's head and hang him onto a tree. And the birds would eat away at the baker's flesh. So the way it played out in three days was Pharaoh's birthday. And just as Joseph said, the cupbearer was restored to his position, and the baker was beheaded and hung on a tree. It was just the way Joseph had said that it would be. We will find out in later chapters that Joseph's ability to interpret dreams would be his ticket to getting out of jail and being free from his imprisonment. Yet another way for him to make the best use of the gifts that God had given him in the exact place where God had put him. From Joseph in this passage, I believe that we can learn something from our journeys. We can learn a lesson of patient endurance and how Patient endurance in every context of life can benefit our journeys, especially in the, in the wake of a pandemic. We have discovered our own instances of adversity and times of struggle in the way that Joseph did. Maybe not as harsh, but we have found struggles and adversities. We had to stay home when we wanted to go. We had to miss family celebrations and be apart from the ones that we love. We had to miss the milestones of the members of our family. We 
just like Joseph, have been challenged to learn the lesson of patient endurance. With patient endurance, we will live life in the context where we are and find purpose and light and so find joy and peace in the context where God has placed us. With patient endurance, we live with the hope that from whatever context, whatever circumstances, whatever struggles God has put before us, a new day will dawn. And that new day dawning comes from living in and making the best of the circumstances that God has put us in. Sometimes when we encounter adversity, our knee-jerk reaction is to pray that God will take us from the time of struggle and put us somewhere where it's better, where it's more pleasant, where it's more convenient. To take the adversity away from us so that we can live a life of peace the way the world defines peace. Rather than praying, not that God would take a difficult circumstance from us, but that God would help us to find an opportunity to shine light into the realm of whatever adverse situation we have encountered. That is the lesson that Joseph's circumstances teaches us today. Patient endurance. Not moving away from a difficult situation, but persevering and enduring and in fact finding a purpose that God has in store for us so that we can shine a light on the path of another rather than feeling sorry for our own situation. Patient endurance. Finding a purpose in the context of where we are. Next week, we will deal with uh, interpretations of Joseph's dreams in uh, later chapters. But for now, let us bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing of your love, for the care that you put in our hearts and the light you shine on our path. We pray now in Jesus' name. Amen.